This is a Hot Pie Media Original. Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Eric Coram, founder of AIM7. Welcome back to The Blueprint, where we distill cutting-edge science, leadership, and life skills into simple tactics optimized for your busy lifestyle and goals. Today, veteran strength and conditioning coach and sports dietitian Pratik Patel is joining me to discuss how to lose body fat leveraging specific nutrition practices and exercise. Pratik has spent over a decade in collegiate and professional sports as a strength and conditioning coach and sports dietitian. He's worked at Kansas State, Michigan State, the University of Oregon, and then spent four years as the director of sports nutrition and an assistant strength coach for the New York Giants. Pratik is now a consultant to sports teams, organization, and high-performance clients. But before we get into this discussion, please take two seconds and smash the subscribe button on whichever listening platform you are listening on, as this is one of the best ways that you can help support the podcast. But now, it's time to lean in and learn from the best. Pratik, as a sports dietitian and strength coach, I am sure you get tons of questions on fat loss. What are the keys to losing fat and staying lean? Is it all nutrition? Is it all exercise? Is there a blend of the two? Go. Yeah. I think it really is a blend of the two. Obviously, nutrition is going to be a big factor with that. I mean, really, the only way to lose weight, especially fat, is to get our bodies in a caloric deficit. Now, the severity of the caloric deficit and how aggressive you are with that is going to dictate how quickly you're going to lose weight. But at the same time, you know, we also don't want to neglect exercise because what the studies have showed us is when we do lose weight, we don't want it to just be um, muscle mass. We don't, we want it to be fat, but the problem is when we get in a caloric deficit, that's a stress on the body. It doesn't supercharge your metabolism or anything like that. It actually decreases your metabolism. So the body's going to go and do what it always does, which is preserve and protect itself. So what it likes to do is hold on to fat. And it wants to burn muscle glycogen. It wants to break down muscle tissue because that's what it needs. You know, it needs to have an an amino acid pool and reservoir. So the way that we can mitigate any muscle mass losses is to eat a high protein diet alongside being in that caloric deficit and resistance training. Because we know that to stimulate muscle protein synthesis, we have to have a stimulus and it's going to have to come from resistance training. So that's where some people sometimes... They, they do it incorrectly. We're like, hey, I want to lose weight. I want to lose fat. I'm going to eat a little bit better. I'm going to start running and doing this aerobic exercise, which is nothing wrong with that. If you're comfortable with doing that, you know, you're not running tons of miles, putting undue excess stress with poor form. But the problem is that's not going to help the body want to hold on to muscle mass and potentially build it and get stronger. So you have to kind of find this fine line between, okay, how many days am I going to be training? What kind of training am I going to be doing? Um, getting into a moderate caloric deficit, not anything over the top. Because What's a moderate when, caloric deficit? I'd say for most people, it can be anywhere between 15 to 35% of a deficit. So let's so say I'm a 150 to 60 pound female, which I'm not. <laughs> uh, and I'm active. You know, I have a couple kids. And, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I don't, I'm not sedentary, but I'm not also doing manual labor. Um, like, what is that? What are you talking about? 200 calories, something like that? 300 calories? Yeah, depending on so what I usually do is based on how active somebody is. So mm-hmm. calculate their resting metabolic rate, get an idea of how much movement they're doing. Um, so figure out on a maintenance day for them to maintain their caloric level. Like these, this is how many calories you need. For most people, it's actually more than they think. Right. If they are moving regularly, not just sitting in front of a screen at work for eight to 10 hours a day and not doing any structured physical activity or exercise. And so from that, so we know what maintenance level is. And if they're that active, the majority of the days of the week, we can calculate backwards and say, okay, we'll multiply by 0.85, 0.75 or 0.65. And then we'll get what the deficit is and figure out what is the appropriate way to put these in throughout the entire day. So the goal over the course of the entire week is for that specific person to be at maybe in and around a 25% caloric deficit. Now, it doesn't mean they have to be at that every single day. Like I uh, generally advocate, try not to eat the same way every single day Mm -hmm. uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, The same way if you did the same workout every single day, you're not going to get any, you're not going to see any progression or progress. Um, So that's, that's how I sometimes approach these things. And you find that like, you know, resistance training is one of those important. If you talk about lean muscle mass, and we're not talking about bulking up. We're talking about like you want to preserve as much muscle as you possibly can because 
in a resting state, it's also going to burn more calories. Am I correct? Yeah, I think it's upwards of maybe 7% more over the course of 24 hours. So day to day, it's not a lot, but you look at that over the course of an entire year, that's pretty significant. Oh yeah. And then also for general health, as you age, like you do not want to be losing muscle. Um, you know, you don't want to <laughs> become just a smaller version of your current self. And that happens. You know, people lose weight and they kind of like look the same just to, you know, they just weigh less because they, they, they atrophied, they lost so much muscle. So how many times a week would you recommend somebody doing resistance training, like three times a week, at least 45 minutes? Yeah, I think um, if we go by what the research says, if you talk about total number of sets you get in per week, because that generally is where you're going to be able to see the improvements in muscle mass and hypertrophy. I mean, it can really range depending on the training age and the training level of an individual. So if somebody's just starting out, doesn't have a lot of confidence, they could probably start around two days, do two full body days, give them a couple days in between, do maybe four to five sets each day for the major muscle mass groups, or it could be three days upwards of four. I generally try to stick within that range, um, depending on, you know, somebody doing like an upper, lower, upper, lower split, or they hitting every, you know, one body part and hitting, you know, 12 to 16 sets for that specific body part, you know, for a specific day, it's going to be harder for them to do that again, um, twice a week, because then they're just, the volume is too high and it goes against what the research has shown for improving strength and improving muscle mass. So it doesn't have to be, you have to spend a ton of time in the gym. It's be efficient, you know, look at what your goals are. Are you trying to just gain strength? Are you trying to gain muscle mass and size? That's going to dictate how many sets, how many reps you're going to do, what the rest periods are going to be in between those and then kind of fill in throughout the entire week. So how long do you recommend people being in a caloric deficit for? Like five months? <laughs> Generally, no. I think everybody's going to have a varying level of weight loss. And this is the tough thing when working with different clients because they have very lofty goals. You know, maybe someone's 275 pounds, like I got to be 225. It's like the last time you were 225 was over a decade ago. So we have, it's going to take some time for you to address the things that you should be doing to be healthy. But also just because you're doing these things doesn't automatically mean the weight's going to come off. You have to spend time with these habits and being consistent for months on end. So the internal systems of the body, you know, decrease inflammation, improve nutrient status, get into a rhythm of fixing your circadian rhythm, getting sleep, uh, managing stress, and then continue to stack these days together. So for some, they can see results within two to three months and be like, well, hey, I'm plateauing off. It's like, okay, now we're not going to keep you at this caloric deficit. We're going to eat at maintenance and then we're going to reassess after a couple of weeks and then recalculate the total number of calories you're going to eat. Because remember, if somebody's losing weight, that means they're burning less cal calories overall based on what their resting metabolic rate is. Mm. So you can't eat at the same level and continue to expect to lose weight. Same thing if somebody's trying to gain muscle mass. So they gain five pounds eating this caloric level. It's like, well, now you're larger, you're burning more calories. You have to recalculate and up those calories too. Yeah. So I think if somebody hits a plateau and they're like, hey, I can't lose any weight. I've been at the same weight. I'm doing everything. I feel good. Workouts are good. And I've been at the same weight for a couple of weeks. It's like, okay, let's kind of recalculate things, put you at a maintenance room, a little bit above where you were with that deficit, see how things progress. If you're able to maintain that, then we'll recalculate and do another. So just like with the stock market, we know that it's not linear, that you have pullbacks and I've experienced this quite a bit. <laughs> it's same thing with weight loss. You know, it's not going to be linear going all the way down. It's like, Hey, I'm going to lose weight. Maybe I'm going to increase a little bit here. Maybe I'm going to plateau. Then I'm going to lose weight as long as I stick with it. Mm -hmm. So the big things are you need to figure out how many calories you need at maintenance. You need to get into a caloric deficit. Um, you need to make sure that you're doing weight training two to three times a week so that you're not losing muscle. And then you need to be mindful of like, you can't do this forever. Like you're going to have a metabolic slowdown. Um, and you're at some point you're going to have to go back to maintenance, recalculate things. So this is not just a linear process, folks. This is something that takes some refinement and it takes expertise. And so I think if you've been struggling maybe with losing weight, uh, you, you know, maybe talk to somebody like Pratic, you know, or, or you need to find an expert because, um, there, you know, the body's a complex system and there's a lot of inputs. You mentioned sleep. You mentioned there's a, a stress inputs. There's inflammation. There's a whole lot of things to go into this, but there's some simple rules of thumb that you can uh, apply today. 
If you found today's podcast valuable, please share this podcast with a friend. Also, I'd love to get your feedback on these mini sods, so please reach out to me by email at eric at ericquorum.com or DM me on Instagram at ericquorum. I'd love to know why you find the podcast valuable and what we can do to make it better. Thanks again for listening, and I'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks for listening. You can find more episodes and all of our other Hot Pie Media originals baked fresh daily at our home online at hotpiemedia.com, the Hot Pie Media YouTube channel, or wherever you listen to podcasts.